Hello everyone, welcome back to a new session on Dentistry and more. So today's uh, topic is uh, diet, nutrition and its association with oral health. So oral health, general health and uh, diet is always interconnected. So let's see how the diet influences oral health and dental caries and diet. In epidemiology of dental caries we have seen uh, the connection between diet and dental caries. Uh, this chapter highlights the diet, nutrition and its effect on the nutritional deficiency on the oral health and other factors. So the basic difference between diet and nutrition is diet is what you eat and drink but nutrition is uh, internal processing. From that uh, food stuffs how much your body consumes that is nutrition it is an internal processing of foods and beverages such as ingestion digestion absorption and assimilation distribution and elimination so the whole process is nutrition and diet is nothing but the food stuffs you eat or drink so this is a very basic chapter of this we have seen in our um, early years like maybe first years and even our um, early school life also we have seen this the major nutrients micronutrients and trace elements carbohydrate proteins fats vitamins minerals and trace elements so proteins we know it is very important so i'm not going very detail about proteins because it is very simple uh, topic there is not much explanation required so it is required for body tissue skin tendons cartilages and it also forms hormones enzymes so we need to stress on the deficiency protein energy deficiency that is pem kashoka marasmus so kashoka is nothing but uh were taken from the Greek language and which means red boy due to the characteristic pigmentary changes later on the term was interpreted as deposed child so it was first recognized by Prof. Cicely Williams in 1933 so it was disease of first child when the second was on the way displacing the first child from breastfeeding so marasmus is known as a wasting it is a Greek word uh, marasmus and it affects uh, children exhibiting uh, extreme wasting and old man appearance to jaws and skin and bones so these type of appearance will be seen in children so this is oral manifestation of protein deficiency there will be right reddening of tongue loss of papillae and edema of tongue bilateral chelosis fissuring of lip uh, loss of circum oral pigmentation and dry mouth so the basic thing is most of the oral manifestations are same for uh, most of the vitamin deficiency and there is slight variations in color appearance but uh, 60 to 70 percent is the same so delayed eruption deciduous teeth may show linear dysplasia so lipids we know it is fats basically saturated and unsaturated fats and fat soluble vitamins ADEK which carries this lipids so nutritional factors affecting the oral cavity there should be optimal nutrition period for hard and soft tissue development so malnutrition overnutrition will create problems such as the tetracycline staining of teeth dental fluorosis enamel defects in premature born uh, children and fever induced enamel hypoplasia so nutrients deficiencies uh, or excess have been directly associated with Conditions like uh, protein, calcium, phosphorus, vitamin C, A, D, iodine and fluorine. So let's see the classification of vitamins, fat soluble A, D, E, K and water soluble B complex and C. So B, there are various uh, category B1, B2, B3, B6, B7, pantothenic acid, uh, B9, B12, which is cyanocobalamin. So vitamin A, its sources we know egg, meat and dairy products, beta carotene also is a precursor of vitamin A. So these are the deficiencies, night blindness, conjunctival cirrhosis, pitot sports, corneal cirrhosis and keratomalacia. 
so oral health this is what we are uh, uh, emphasizing upon vitamin a helps in synthesis of proteoglycans fibronectin and type 1 procollagen it is also helps in epithelial tissue differentiation acts on cells with high turnover rate and helps in formation of amyloblasts and orondoblasts so what happens if there is a deficiency it affects salivary gland there will be decreased salivary flow it causes increased caries oral mucous membrane there will be hyperkeratosis and gingival hypoplasia in teeth during pre eruptive stage deficiency causes enamel hypoplasia and defective dentine formation so normal teeth spacing and osteoblast function of alveolar bone also will be impaired in case of vitamin a deficiency and in periodontium there is tendency to periodontal pocket formation so as a result of this pocket formation proliferation of basal cells of gingival epithelium and a decreased cellular infiltrate on the lamina propria and there will be cleft lip and palate chances during early development of both uh, deficiency and high doses reported to induce cleft lip and palate vitamin d we know it is known as sunshine vitamin there are d1 to d5 category d2 to d3 are nutritional importance so these are the required daily allowance upper level so only the fat soluble vitamins have uh, upper level because it is getting stored not like uh, b and c which is water soluble so vitamin d deficiency causes enamel hypoplasia there will be uncalcified dentine matrix physical roughness of enamel surfaces causes adherence of plaque and caries so vitamin e it increases resistance to inflammatory mediated tissue destruction and which improves gingival health so in case of deficiency there will be decreased inflammatory response and gingival health also will be impaired so vitamin k which is uh, helping for the coagulation if deficiency is there there will be uh, hemorrhage secondary deficiency also causes with antibiotics newborn infants receives a single dose of vitamin k at birth because of the sterile intestinal tract so gingival bleeding and post extraction hemorrhages are the problems associated with the vitamin k and which is also known as anti caries agent because it has a in activity of enzyme inhibiting in the carbohydrate degradation cycle vitamin a and vitamin e have no non effect on anti caries activity so let's move on to vitamin b that is water soluble vitamin b1 we know thiamine so it is uh, all these structures <coughs> deficiency causes beriberi but beriberi dry beriberi and infantile beriberi wet means it has uh, cardiac manifestations this is a cns manifestation and infantile beriberi because it is seen in infants born to mothers suffering from thiamine deficiency so what are the dental considerations there will be tongue changes in form of enlarged flabby red and edematous appearance with engorgement of Punchiform papillae, gingiva becomes inflamed and present with an old rose color. So these type of uh, features we need to keep in mind because uh, always study uh, link thiamine old rose color because most of the uh, manifestations are same like I told. So the old rose seen in thiamine deficiency, hepatic like vesicles, palate, buccal mucosa, and tongue. So vitamin B two. riboflavin it is a first week complex component to be isolated and in deficiency angular colitis pallor of lips and angle of mouth glossitis magenta color tongue causes so this magenta color tongue keep in mind cause due to atrophy of papilla and increased vascularization seborrheic dermatitis and proliferation of bulbar conjunctival capillaries tongue changes there will be the tongue changes initial stages reddish appearance of tip and lateral margins of tongue with costly granular due to atrophy of filiform papillae and engorgement of fungiform papillae will happen so in severe cases which leads to atrophy of all papillae causing tongue to appear very smooth and glazed so also deficiency leads to increased vascularization which causes tongue to appear magenta in color so always remember riboflavin deficiency seborrheic dermatitis and magenta color tongue so vitamin b3 niacin so we know basic functions of nerve impulses and uh, circulatory free fatty acids so let's see what are the dental consideration it causes stomatitis stomatitis angular colitis atrophic glossitis severe gingival 
inflammation with necrosis so tongue changes are epithelium of tongue appears desquamated filiform papilla disappears first and engorgement of fungiform papillae so early stages same as uh, other deficiency tip and lateral borders are involved it becomes swollen and advanced cases there will be severe reddening and becomes all the papilla losing pantothenic acid derived from greek word pantos means everywhere so formerly known as chick and dermatitis factor which is a coenzyme a metabolic role it's coenzyme a so dental consideration ulceration and hyperkeratosis gingival necrosis and resorption of alveolar crest biotin is anti egg white injury factor so it's a uh, high consumption of raw egg which contains avidin is which tightly binds to biotin and reduces intestinal absorption so there will be destruction of intestinal flora due to prolonged administration so vitamin b6 uh, which is also known as pyridoxin it's a uh, dental deficiency there will be lip changes the most common thing is angular chelitis which initially presents as a pallor of the lip and the angle of the mouth then it is followed by reddening of lips due to disformation of epithelium at the angles these fissures develop a yellow crest which can be removed without bleeding so tongue changes are glossitis with pain edema and papillary changes tongue has scaled sensation followed by reddening and hypertrophy of the filiform papillae at the tip margins and dorsum folic acid which means leaf of vegetable what happens is deficiency causes uh, causes a folate deficiency there will be defective absorption hemolytic anemia that true deficiency so folate deficiency uh, causes uh, this problem that is macrocytic anemia there will be increased risk of atherosclerosis hyperchromos cystinuria so vitamin b12 you know uh, cyanocobalamin which is uh, nutritional vitamin b12 deficiency it's seen in uh, elderly people and people with gastrectomy fish tip um, infection people so dental consideration uh, b9 and b12 causes pernicious anemia and dental consideration initial oral symptoms is presented with uh, glossopyria and followed by swelling and pallor with disappearance of filiform and fungiform papillae then bright red diffuse excruciating painful ulcers will be seen so vitamin c uh, it is we know that the james lind experiment i have mentioned it in the ophthalmology side rct uh, section how oh, james lind uh, was one of the pioneers in epidemiology or uh, randomized control trial so he used his uh, lime water for treating the scurvy so what happens if we stop taking vitamin c there will be hemorrhagic signs, defective synthesis of osteoid, impaired wound healing, and perifollicular hemorrhages. So vitamin C is very uh, important role in our periodontium because low levels of vitamin C influences metabolism of collagen within the periodontium. It interferes with bone formation, leading to alveolar bone loss, which increases levels of ascorbic acid, enhances chemotactic and migratory action of leukocytes. These are the roles of vitamin C and depletion causes which interferes with ecological equilibrium of bacteria in plaque and it uh, increases its pathogenicity. An optimal level of vitamin C is required to maintain the integrity of periodontal, microvascular, vasculature and wound healing. So vitamin C has a very crucial role in maintaining a proper periodontal health. So let's see what are the basic dental considerations as we discussed. Earliest manifestation of scurvy in gingivitis which leads to periodontitis and tooth mobility and loss of teeth. So deficiency aggravate in gingival response to bleed and worsen the edema, enlargement and bleeding. Vitamin C influences, we have seen in the previous slide, collagen uh, metabolism of periodontium and affecting the ability of tissues to regenerate and repair itself. 
So scurvy is a very um, severe disease causing the gums which leads to changes in the teeth in form of hypoplastic leads to atrophy of aminoblast and odontoblast and uh, dentin formed which lacks parallel arrangement of dentin tubules so this is affecting both soft tissues and hard tissues so let's see what are the minerals affected calcium vitamin d and phosphorus which are uh, essential for proper development and maintenance of mineralized tissues especially teeth and alveolar so deficiency of these nutrients is a critical phase of tooth development causing hypomineralization of teeth and it might lead to delayed eruption. Iron deficiency anemia, which manifests in the oral cavity as pallor, oral tissues, which we have seen with uh, pernicious anemia. Tongue will be shiny and blunted, filiform papillae. Spinalized tissues are less clear. Uh, the iron deficiency associated effect and serves basically as a cofactor with ascorbic acid. So it has a role in vitamin C and its synthesis. So zinc regulates the function of inflammation by inhibiting release of lysosomal enzymes. Zinc deficiency can inhibit collagen formation and reduce cell mediated immunity. This is important because sometimes question might come as trace elements and oral health. So zinc deficiency can also result in delayed wound healing, defective keratinization and epithelial thickening and atrophy of oral mucosa also essential for taste and odor sensitivity so diet and enamel mineralization so dental demineralization can result from excessive tooth brushing regurgitation of stomach acid as in eating disorders like bulimia nervosa or excessive consumption of acid containing foods or beverages and also the effect of acid from diet is magnified in presence of zero stomium because saliva helps to neutralize the acid. So dietary sources of acids are citrus fruits, juices, acidogenic uh, sports drinks, snacks with citrus acid, the carbonated beverages, vitamin C chewable tablets and the gastric uh, regurgitation products. So role of carbohydrate uh, we know we have discussed in detail uh, in epidemiology of dental caries. You know, streptococcus is a bacteria which, is, uh, which needs uh, a susceptible tooth, bacteria and fermentable carbohydrate at a appropriate time which becomes epidemiology tetrad. So other dietary factors counteract the damaging effect of carbohydrates. So there will be always a balance between protective and destructive factors. So protective factors are fluoride, calcium, phosphorus in plaque and saliva which promotes remineralization of early lesions. So that's all about uh, diet and um, or oral health or dental caries and oral health. So this is a very common question. Uh, it's been repeatedly asked uh, the diet and oral health or diet and nutrition and its effect on oral health, diet and dental caries, uh, trace elements and dental caries. So all these are uh, very simple to study. Uh, only thing, uh, the, the same thing which we studied in our first year or uh, early uh, school life, the same thing which a uh, little bit of oral manifestation uh, make a good essay. So I'll come up with a new session on dentistry and more.